Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and this is Elite Dangerous. It's the Alpha 1.1 build which I've just got access to and I'm going to be showing you the Elite flight mechanics. The game has 6 degrees of freedom and it also uses Newtonian flight mechanics. You can enable and disable this through the in-game flight assist mode. I'm going to be giving you a quick run through of this through an asteroid field. Right, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller here, which actually works very well. This is rudder, or your. We also have roll. You may have noticed that rudder was fairly slow, and that's a deliberate game design choice to try and encourage people to favour roll. And pitch. Now, being in space, we also have a couple of other movements to us. One of course is thrust upwards and downwards. We should also have thrust side to side but I haven't got that mapped to this gamepad. And of course we've also got forward and backwards. Now I'm going to take a quick run around this asteroid field and give a brief demonstration of some techniques. Now I'm no expert I've only been playing this about a week, but I've managed to learn a few little things. And to be honest, it's actually a lot of fun. So here I'm putting all power to the engines and boosting forward. I've just disabled flight assist, and you can see I've reorientated my ship to face down, and you can see the asteroids sliding by beneath me. I'm still maintaining my original direction here. I can actually flip the ship right over and face the direction I came. Here I can put the ship in reverse, switch flight assist back on, and I'm actually flying backwards. Applying boost is perfect because I can then immediately accelerate back in the direction I came from. Now I'm going to do a quick demonstration of a nice little technique here. And you can see there's a little gap in the approaching asteroids here. I'm going to slip right through it. Now that is perfect for breaking missile lock. So I'll show that to you again. Um, what I do is approach the asteroids at either full speed or half speed. Uh, look for a nice little gap. I switch flight assist off. Aim the ship in the direction I want to travel. Enable flight assist again and use my booster. It's actually a lot of fun just flying through the asteroid field like this. I can spend ages doing this. I'm just going to approach another asteroid here and show you something else. What I'm going to do is combine pitch and up and down thrust. So here you'll see I actually pitch up and use the down thrust at the same time. This enables me to keep the asteroid in my targets. Now if you can imagine that being an enemy ship and if I was actually a little bit better at controlling this, I'd be able to keep them in my target at all times. Right, now let's have a little shoot at some of these canisters here. Quite often you'll find your target slips right past you and this is a perfect opportunity to disable flight assist. We ought to take your ship back towards your target again. See, I've disabled flight assist again, and I've actually put the ship into reverse, and I've sort of re-enabled flight assist. This enables me to fly backwards while shooting at my original target. What I'm going to do now is thrust up, and I'm going to take a pass over the top of my target. I'm going to enable flight assist and then boost down on top of them. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm shooting stationary targets that don't shoot back it's very easy so let's move on and work some targets that fly and shoot back on this mission we have a single enemy target uh, he's actually a fairly good pilot and it took me quite a few attempts to get past this the first few times now a lot of people actually fly this game without the Newtonian flight physics, they need flight assist on the whole time, but I actually like to toggle it on and off. So I'm going to approach the hypergate here. As 
that's my target. Whilst he's coming toward me, I can actually maintain flight assist, but as he passes me, I'll switch flight assist off and re enable it so I can get behind him. I quite often need to use boosters here, but again, I'll, as he comes round and starts passing either above me or beneath me, I'll need to switch flight assist off so I can track him. Now, the shift, my ship actually does drift quite a bit when I do this, so it's hard to keep him in my targets. But once it's fairly central to me, I could re enable flight assist and try and lock onto him. There you go. The poor little guy didn't even get a chance to shoot back. So, let's try that with a bunch more targets. On this mission we actually have four enemy ships and they all attack us at the same time. Now I won't admit that it took me probably two to three hours to actually get past this mission the first time. They just kept killing me very very quick. My biggest problem was the amount of time it was taking me to turn and track my targets. But things improved tremendously once I started toggling the flight assist mode. So the first target down. You can see I disable flight assist again to track a new target. Once I've tracked him, I'll put flight assist back on and boost after him. Flight assist off. Reorientate to new target. There he is. Flight assist on. Let's go after him. Missiles. And he should be gone. This leaves one remaining target. Now I'm actually going to try and do a turn with the flight assist on there, but no, it was too bit too tight. There he is. A few more missiles after him and that'll probably finish him off. I often hear a lot of discussion about the whole six degrees of freedom thing and Newtonian flight physics, but it can actually make for some very interesting combat and I've personally vastly prefer this to World War II in space. But the great thing with the Elite is that it works just as well with flight assist on. Well, that's it. I'll catch you guys later.